Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm ZS Caravalli from ZK Research, and I'm here at AWS Reinforced 2025 in Philadelphia. I'm in the Expo Hall now. I'm at the One Password stand, and uh, I'm joined by Monica Jane and Yash uh, Kaur. Uh, uh, Monica, what do you do for One Password? Great question. So I head up strategic alliances at One Password. A big part of Fly Kyrenian is to cover off our partner with AWS. Oh, okay. And uh, Yash, uh, introduce yourself. And then, what does One Password do? So one password if I need a new cybersecurity category called extended access management. And as part of extended access management, we are going beyond password management. We are securing every sign-in, every user, every login to every application uh, that companies have in their organization. Yeah. So uh, as part of like extended access management, we are closing this access trust gap, which is a huge issue, into this like digital workspace. Um, and as part of like access trust gap, we are giving IT team more visibility into which applications are being used by the employees, uh, which is, and some of them might be sanctioned by IT, some of them might not be. So we are covering all these areas with extended access management and AI agents, like non-human identities are becoming more common and common yes. in today's digital workspace. So extended access management is also all about like securing AI agent access. Uh, so we're like looking at that space as well. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all what one password does. Monica, do you want to answer? Like, yeah, it's, it's a great covered for uh, what it's addressing it there. So, if you think about one password's extended access method solution, what it's really addressing is a sprawl of employees working on any device, on any application. The IT may not have it as already too. And that's the access trust gap that Yash is speaking about. So, I'll use a good example. We're going to meet today's years. And pre meeting today, we want to make sure you had the content in advance of our meeting but I didn't know how to get it over to you. So instead of sending it to you by email, I sent it to you in a file sharing app. We don't use a file sharing app at one password. So I may have used any file sharing app off the internet. I put secure company information in this application mm -hmm. and I sent it to you. I don't know which device you're using this on. I don't know if you have an MDM solution in place. I don't know if you have EDNR uh, int like integrated into your, into your system. And I do not know if the skull sharing app is riddled with malware. So what I've basically done is I've compounded risk. That makes you feel good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine the situation for a lot of employees are yeah. trying to circumvent. Well, everyone does that, right? right? Yeah. Also, that you want to make sure you're getting to the end disturbing as fast as you can, and IT teams need to be able to empower employees to be productive. Yeah. In fact, uh, I've always said that if you remember the old uh, Jurassic Park movie when uh, Jeff Goldblum said, "Life finds a way, yeah. users find a way." Right, and so you, you should make it secure. Now, I know at the event you had some news uh, regarding the partnership between 1Password and AWS, and so do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So on Monday, we announced a specific collaboration agreement with AWS, and we launched our partnership with AWS early 2024. Over the first seven months, AWS had given us all the intense signals that told us what we did in the first seven months, most ISVs had not achieved in 24 to 30 to 6 months. And so we took that as a signal saying, let's really accelerate doing more with AWS and adding fuel to this partnership. So through the SCA, what we're going to be doing is making sure we're really addressing the needs of the access plus gap and making sure we're helping organizations also extend their secure cloud adoption. Yeah, now with AI coming and all anybody talks about is how the workforce is going to be this mix of people and agents like these a is that trust gap gonna get bigger here it is yeah truly it is uh, so with ai agents non-human identities coming to the picture uh, the access trust gap is going to prove because humans they are still can be governed but ai agents can be right so like i think that's where that's the gap that one path is trying to address and we are trying to address that from authentication side so how can we make sure that like the vision here is that how can we ensure developers can actually build agents more securely so that those agents can access the applications that they need to access to be able to complete tasks um, securely and easily. Um, no hard-coded credentials for those AI agents in their, con in their yeah. content files. In addition to that, we want to add more policies. So uh, like policies, like more governance are now there. Yeah. Uh, and again, reporting is going to be a big theme here because IT admin security folks want to make sure that they can access uh, the traceability and auditability regarding what these AI agents are accessing and when and from there. Yeah. So this is going to be a huge thing that one password, the vision is that we are going to address this. It's fascinating to think of the future too, because people will give a simple example like, um, if my flight's canceled, you tell your corporate travel agent, rebook my flight. Right. But then 
there's airline passwords, there's hotel passwords, there's car rentals, there's your probably your expense system. There's all these things that create this down. And so who owns that, right? I don't want to start having every system have access to every password, right? So uh, I don't think we've even begun to scratch the surface of that problem yet. Very true. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Yeah. And this is also a good segue into our recent release regarding secret syncing uh, with AWS, uh, you know, secret manager. So again, the- Secret syncing. Secret syncing. I like that. <laughs> and uh, now if you look at this, we are, you are basically providing a secure and easy way uh, for secrets to be synced whether that secrets are developer secrets or environment variables, we are providing a secure, a secure way to automatically sync these secrets from one password to AWS Secret Manager. Now it addresses three, it provides three key benefits. Uh, number one is credential management. So all of that is happening within one passway, you know, so that like all environment variables are being created within one password, including those, you know, secrets that developers need to access different uh, in, like systems and tools. Uh, easy to use, you know. I think this is uh, one of the one of the things that we have. I have heard a lot internally is making the secure thing the simple thing. I think this is the key. Yeah. Uh, so we is, we are making it easy to use so that any time developer triggers a sick, triggers an edit or update in one password for either the environment variable or the secret, it automatically triggers a sync into AWS Secret Manager. But it's doing it in a very sec secure way. So we are, we are leveraging this technology, which is you know built by AWS, which is Nitro in place, and we have confidential computing, yeah. and we are securely transmitting that change from one password into AWS Secret Manager. Okay. So. Okay. And then, how's the momentum been? As how what's customer feedback been like on the the work you two have done together? Honestly, so far, even just the adoption of our uh, of our tools and integrations with AWS, it has been. High, like highly adopted by our joint customers. Yeah. On top of that, at conference, we have a tremendous, like we have, a, there was a tremendous interest regarding secret syncing. Okay, what is that? Okay, yeah. that is pamphlets and people were showing immense interest in getting to know how it works. And we we're showing them, and I want to use this example very quickly. So, I mean, developers have uh, local testing environments and they also have production environments. And they might have like different local environments, one for testing, one for development. So you can create these environments within one password, and those environments can contain multiple environment variables. Yeah. I think that's very common, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So this use case of this example was quickly picked up by folks who were coming to our booth, oh. and they were loving it. So yeah. And what's wonderful about that, and to see again, all when we go to conferences, our Retai Kata Draghi Camp product is so beloved to our consumers everywhere. I'm looking to our side, yeah. and then over time, tech putting that into their work environment. And so just the evolution of becoming, being a consumer first company into a B2B company and the evolution to the one password send and access management has been incredible. And the response we get from customers and the intent signals we get from customers tells us we're on the right path. Yeah, you know, it's funny, uh, on the, the popularity of consumer product, uh, I'm, I use the neighborhood, uh, what's the Nextdoor app? And somebody put out there, they complained that they clicked on something and got breached. And somebody said, that's why I use one password. <laughs> yeah, so, there, so there's a good proof one that I, yeah. I always get the very yeah. important points. It's yeah. so always wonderful to hear because consumers really, the yeah. product really resonates. Yeah, well, password management is uh, yeah. something nobody likes doing, and nobody does it well either. So uh, now, what are, what are some threats to your business? What do you, when you look out ahead, um, where do you see the threats come? Yeah, our biggest threat right now is time itself. We recognize that the access plus gap is a very real thing. And it's only growing exponentially. You can set it yourself. Yeah. And so staying ahead of that, really making sure that we can get to the consumers in the time that they need to address those gaps within the organization is critical. As a carving folks like AWS that have that reach, there's a multiple regions, multiple verticals, and multiple customers, we can get there faster. Well, is there anything else you want to add about the uh, AWS uh, collaboration room? Absolutely. Look, we're incredibly excited as a company about this SCA. Just the powerful partnership that we have between ourselves and AWS is going to be a massive accelerant for making sure we can really hit those objectives that we need to hit as a company over the next five to six years. Yeah. And I will say on top of that, just in the last 18 months alone, we have seen our deal sizes go quarter to five times higher. Our deal velocity has been 54% higher and we're just getting started. And so we know again, by the critical investment we're going to get through the SCA and then working in close collaboration with the AWS okay. team, that this is just a that this is just a tipping point. Yeah, well, AWS has been big on simplicity, 
and they always listen to their customers. So if they're, you know, that agreement to me would be validation that this is indeed something customers want and need. Yeah. All right. Anything else you, you want to add? No, I think I'm good. Okay, good. All right. So on behalf of uh, Yash and Monica from the One Password booth at AW at AWS Reinforce. I'm Zia Skira of Aller from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast.